Alex's long-lost brother Vulcan returned from his space exile to reclaim his title as an X-Man, killing Banshee in the process. After it was revealed Xavier had deceived the X-Men by keeping Vulcan's existence a secret, the X-Men attacked him as they deemed him too dangerous to be left alone. Vulcan easily repelled their attack and fled the planet, renouncing Cyclops as his brother, and headed for space, bent on revenge on the Shear Empire for killing his mother. Havoc was recruited by Professor X, along with Marvel Girl, Nightcrawler, Warpath, Darwin, and Polaris to participate in a space mission to stop Vulcan from unleashing his powers on the Shear Empire. Alex witnessed Vulcan murder their father. Alex, Lorna, and Rachel Summers stayed in space, joining the Starjammers to lead the resistance against Vulcan and his wife, Deathbird, who had conquered the Shear Empire. The civil war between Vulcan's forces and those loyal to the dethroned Lalandra raged on. Led by Havoc and the Starjammers, Lalandra's forces gradually whittled away at Vulcan's forces, which were plagued by defections. Warned in advance of a rebel raid on Feather's Edge, Vulcan and his fleet ambushed the Starjammers. However, in the middle of the battle, his ship, the Hammer, was destroyed by the Psi backquote A.R. Tal, translating to, Death to the Shear. Vulcan made contact with the Starjammers to call a temporary ceasefire. Under the ceasefire, the Shear and the Starjammers decided to take out the finality, thus crippling the Sire's biggest threat. Once Havoc and Vulcan were in position to destroy finality, the eldest Sire tried to stop them. Once Vulcan figured out how the eldest was powered, he severed the connection eldest had with his brothers, making him powerless. Once the connection was severed, the Sire became unorganized, and the tide of the battle shifted to the Shear. The Shear then proceeded to attack both the Sire and the Starjammers. Meanwhile, Vulcan blasted Havoc into a sun. Vulcan decided to use finality to destroy the Sire by using the weapon to place a star in the middle of their fleet. Alex returned and, having absorbed enough power to burn Vulcan, decided to end things with him. While they battled, Rachel and Corvus tried, and failed, to stop the beacon that would initiate the attack by the Shear. The Shear Imperial Guard ended Alex's battle with Vulcan by appearing with the Starjammers in captivity, threatening to kill them. Before surrendering, Alex destroyed Finality. Alex and the Starjammers were then taken into Vulcan's custody and placed in a prison, while Rachel Summers remained free. Alex and Lorna, along with the other captured Starjammers, were kept in a deep underwater prison below a planet's surface. Alex and Lorna were tortured daily and forced to hear each other's screams, and Alex was powerless as he was nowhere near a star or any cosmic force to draw his powers from. Despite ploys such as telling Havoc that his teammates were dead and it was all Alex's fault, Havoc remained defiant. Alex had at least some power left. He allowed some time to go by, with moments of exposure continuing, before killing his guards and escaping. Alex then liberated his teammates from captivity. As he rescued Polaris, she gave him a thank you kiss. Havoc surprised his team as he informed them of his true plan. Instead of running they would wait, Gabriel would be coming to them to defeat them, and Havoc planned to kill him when he did. After Rachel and Corvus lost their connection to the Phoenix Force, Havoc and the Starjammers departed for Kree space. The group attended the wedding of Crystal and Ronan the Accuser. Vulcan and the Imperial Guard sacked the wedding and injured many present. The Kree then declared war on the Shear. 